Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we're gonna be installing this Pella 150 series vinyl patio door with built-in blinds in this opening you see here to my left. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. This channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money, so be sure to subscribe if you're into that and smash that like button if you found value in this video. All right, let's get started installing this patio door. So right here's the opening. So the very first thing you need to do is measure the width of the opening and the height of the opening. And need to make sure there's no less than a quarter inch gap because if it's any less than that, it's hard to get insulation in to insulate it properly. And if it's any more than that, it's okay up to about three eighths of an inch because of the nailing flange. There's a nailing flange on this door. You need to make sure we can nail to something solid. So quarter inch gap is what we want. And after you measure, make sure it fits. Go ahead and check the bottom of the opening. Make sure we're level. It looks really nice. And make sure your sides are plumb. That looks really plumb on this side and really plumb on this side. And I just built this house so I know our level uh, bottom is here and our plumb sides are here. All right, so the next step is we're gonna get the door and dry fit it in. All right, so we got the door dry fitted into the opening. And now I have my dad here helping me. He's just holding it into place right now. So what I'm gonna do is show you the inside, what we're looking for before we put liquid nails under the door because you don't wanna put it on first before you dry fit it because if you have to take it out and shift it around, you're gonna get liquid nails everywhere and you don't want that. All right, I'm gonna show you the inside first before I nail the outside. All right, as you can see, we got a nice gap here. We want at least a quarter inch, like I said, and we got a nice little quarter inch gap up here. And on this side, maybe a little more than a quarter inch, but that looks good. So now, as you can see, we're setting flat on the bottom. So we're gonna tilt the door out. He's gonna hold it while I put liquid nails underneath this threshold. Almost there, a little more, a little more. Okay, right there, it looks good. So we got it tilted out enough to get a couple beads of this liquid nails underneath the door. All right, and a nice heavy bead. You doing okay out there, Gerald, holding it pretty good? So that's what it looks like under there. Nice heavy beads of caulk. This is the liquid nails and it keeps it adhered down to the subfloor and it keeps water from penetrating through the bottom of that door, which you ain't gonna have a problem here because it's a covered deck. All right, he's gonna lift it right up into place. He's lifting, lifting, and boom. We have a nice solid seal there. There's actually a little bit coming out from under there and that is okay because we'll put some down pressure, make sure it's nice and solid. So we know the bottom of the opening's level. So we centered up from the inside first and as you've seen, there's a nice even gap around. So we're gonna anchor the bottom corners first on the nailing flange using aluminum nails. All right, so now that our bottoms are anchored and that it's in the center of the opening, we're gonna check this side of the door where the latch is going. And that looks pretty close. But you wanna check the reveal and use the level at the same time, okay? So according to the door's reveal, it needs to shift this way. And if you look at the level, the level shows the same thing. The top needs to shift that way just a little bit. So in order to get that door shifted over, this is when you just gotta take shims. And I got a couple old composite shims here, but you just put it up in the corner of the door that needs shifted over. And now we're gonna check with the level as we shift it a little bit more. All right, so that's close. And now we're gonna check with the door. So now that we got the door setting square where we want it, now we nail off that nailing flange on the outside. So now that we got our top shimmed, now you need to shim the center of the door here because this jam's pretty flimsy. So you can see there's a good bit of play. So you gotta shim this about where you need it. So again, just check to reveal the door with the jam. So if you eyeball there, that's probably a little bit too much. Looks like that looks pretty good right there. So now you can go outside and nail off that nailing flange. And this side over here, let me turn the camera over there. This is a fixed panel. So that side is gonna be setting square no matter what. So as long as your bottom's level, this side is gonna be setting plumb. And um, that, this all looks really good. So let's go nail off the outside. Before we nailed that off, I wanted to show you what I mean by reveal. So you can see here, we got about an inch gap or so down through there. So if you slide the door over to where it's almost shut, that is the reveal. So you can see it's nice and even. 
So wherever that stays, um, when you nail it, is where it's going to be. And then you're going to fine tune, adjust it whenever you put in your latch for your door handle. All right, to nail this off, just use these regular aluminum inch and quarter nails. So these are the same you do siding with. Just a word of caution here, when you're nailing off your door, be sure you don't miss the nailing flange and hit the side of the door because it's made out of vinyl and if it's cold or even if it isn't cold, if you hit it hard enough, it will crack for sure. All right, as you can see here, I nailed off every one of the nail holes and uh, typically for windows, only nail every other one. But in this case, I nailed every one because it's holding a fair amount of weight. So before the door shut, if you can't get this reveal looking this good, all you have to do is come down here to the door's panel and there's a screw right here. All you gotta do is tighten that up and it's gonna lift this side of the door, which in return is gonna shift the reveal that way. And then if it's the opposite problem, just back this screw out and it's gonna drop this side and it's gonna open up the reveal at the top of the door right here. So if you can't get this reveal perfect, there's always this adjustment down here on the door. All right, so now it's time to install the latch with the screws it came with. So the principle behind this is, here is your locking mechanism right here. So with this, the idea is when you pull this down and it lifts up, it's gonna lock into this latch. So that's gonna be how it works. So theoretically, if you see this slot, you need the top of the little hook piece. If you see the bottom part of the hook piece, it needs to go um, against the top of the inside of this slot that's made. So it's gonna hook in like that when it's totally shut. So when you anchor this to this uh, jam, you need to make sure it's lined up correctly. So it should be about somewhere like that. So what you need to do is mark the top of this against this jam. So all you can really do is eyeball and then mark with a pencil. It's kind of uh, the only way I found to do it. So after you mark it in here for the height of that, you're gonna take the screws and screw it right into place. So to attach this latch, just pop this into the door jam. And then at the top of this uh, slot is where you want it to line up the top of that mark you made. So um, you wanna go ahead and mark the center of these oval slots. Go ahead and put a screw here and drive it in now. Okay. And now before you put the other ones in, you wanna shut the door and see if it latches there. All right, right there is a solid latch. So that is going to be fine. And double check your reveal, make sure it didn't move too much. And it still looks really good. Okay. So now, let's just go ahead and snug that up where it's at. So now put the remaining three screws into the three slots that's available for the screws. All right, and double check to make sure it latches well one last time. Perfect. All right, so if your door has some play in it like this when you shut and latch it, chances are you need to tighten up this locking mechanism. So in order to do that, there is a straight headed screw right here. All you gotta do is pull the latch all the way out so that you can see it and then go ahead and tighten this up or re and loosen it up. It'll actually draw in that latch. So now when you shut it and pull your latch, it's gonna close it tighter. Let me show you one cool feature about this series of door. It has mini blinds built in. Watch this, you'll like this, look. We're lowering them and now you can adjust them with the other knob. Check this out, the other side has it too. Look at this, we're dropping them and now we're adjusting them. And I'll take you on the inside and show you how that works. So to use the mini blinds, you got the slider here for adjusting them. Then you got the slider here for bringing them up and down. So you just simply slide it up. 
Very simple, right? And then you use this other one to adjust them. Pretty slick, and this side has it as well. So to fill in this crack, all you need to do is take spray foam and spray this, and it'll fill in that crack. Or you can take this kind of insulation, this pink stuff, simply take pieces of it and just stuff it down into that crack. So either way is fine. So in case you guys were wondering what the exact door is I just installed, it's the 150 series vinyl 72 by 80 patio door. And uh, this is the actual dimensions of it. And this is a little more detail here. And this is the number here of the door. So just so you know the exact door that I was showing you how to install. So before I say the door is completely installed, there's two different kinds of tape you can use to tape around the door. So the first one is this flashing tape. It's kind of a rubberized tape. This stuff's pretty expensive. And uh, if this door was exposed to a lot of elements where there wasn't a covered deck uh, it's sitting in, I would definitely use this. But since we're on the inside of the deck, I'm just gonna use Tyvek tape and it's gonna tape to the house wrap, which is gonna tape onto that J channel of that, or the nailing flange of that door. So it's gonna keep it airtight around the sides. So again, if you're out in elements, no covering, I highly recommend this kind of flashing tape, but I would just use this Tyvek tape if you're under a good covering. Something else this is good for too, is before you install the door on the subfloor, you can put this down on it as well. Again, it's good if you're exposed to a lot of elements. I would highly recommend putting this down on the subfloor. It just kind of flashes that in case there's any kind of water that seeps in behind that door. But in this case, we're under a covered deck and I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Tyvek tape and tape around this door. Okay, so that is what the outside is going to look like completed. You got your tape around the edges and your nail holes and the lip and everything are all covered up and looks nice. So now if water gets behind here, it goes behind this flashing and down to the ground. And uh, yeah, nothing wrong with that. And what some people do too, you can run a bead of caulk there if you don't want any water pushing back under that. But I'm not worried about it under here. And over here, um, this liquid nails, as you can see, seeped out some, which is fine, because now we know we got plenty in there. All you gotta do before that sets up, go ahead and just scrape that out of there. So, pretty simple fix there. But the inside is complete, and the door install is done. So now that the door install is complete, I got a couple other things I need to get done around here. And I just wanna say thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe, smash that like button if you found value in this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.